Hi everyone. Did you have a good day at school? Yeah. Great. Meow meow. Oh look everyone, it's Mittens. Hi Mittens. Meow meow. What's that Mittens? Our friend Mr. Sun is shining bright? Let's go outside and say hello. Do you want to come with us? Let's go outside. You do? Great. Hello. Meow, meow. Hi, Mr. Sun. We need your help. Mr. Tree has a problem. Or I've forgotten how to make energy. Uh-oh. I know I'm going to need your help to remember how plants get energy. Will you help us? Great. Hmm. First we need... Sunlight. That's right. And then some... Water. In order to make ATP and NADPH, electrons must pass through two photosystems. First, it goes through photosystem 2. We start with a water molecule. Enzyme Z separates the hydrogens from the oxygen, releasing electrons. The electron becomes charged from photons in sunlight. After being charged, the electron is accepted by quinine, which becomes reduced and is called plastoquinin. Plastoquinin transfers the electron to the beta F complex proton pump, where the electron gives its energy to activate the pump. The proton pump pumps hydrogen ions from the stroma to the thylakoid space. The hydrogen ions flow down their gradient through an ATP synthase back into the stroma and produce ATP by chemiosmosis. This occurs in photosystem 2. During photosystem 1, the electron is shuttled from the beta F complex to a new antenna structure to receive more energy by plastocyanin. Remember, the electron donated its energy to activate the proton pump. Once recharged by new photons, the electron is passed to ferrodoxin in the stroma. The reduced ferrodoxin donates its electron to NADP plus to make NADPH in the stroma. This process is called non-cyclic because the electron is not returned back to photosystem 2. Instead, it follows an electron chain to form NADPH. Hmm, so the proton pump sets up a concentration gradient. That means there are a lot of hydrogen ions in the... In the thylakoid space! And ATP and NADPH are made in the... In the stroma! Thanks everyone! Now I remember! But what do I do with the ATP and NADPH? Calvin cycle! That's right, the Calvin cycle! During the Calvin cycle, carbon dioxide from the atmosphere becomes reduced. Three molecules of CO2 combine with three molecules of ribulose bisphosphate and produce six molecules of phosphoglycerate. ATP and NADPH produce earlier during the photosystems convert phosphoglycerate into glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. Glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate is used to produce glucose, other sugars, and used to regenerate ribulose bisphosphate. Ribulose bisphosphate must be regenerated for the Calvin cycle to repeat. The glucose and other sugars created are used for energy, repairing cells, or are stored until needed later. Wow, you guys sure are smart. Thanks for all your help today. Thanks, everyone. That's all the time we have for today. See you tomorrow for another learning adventure. Meow, meow.